Hello everybody, Jeff Olson here with Danfoss Drives. Today's video is going to demonstrate how to set up the integrated no-flow power tuning feature in the VLT Aqua and HVAC drives. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. We're going to use this pump demonstrator unit to display this feature. You'll notice that the demo has three pumps and three drives on it. For the purposes of this video, we're only going to be using one pump, which is a one horsepower pump I have here connected to this VLT Aqua Drive. The demo also has a series of control valves. Now, I'm going to step you through the process of setting up these parameters, but the first step in the process of no-flow power tuning is to create a true no-flow situation. I'm going to accomplish that by closing Closing the valve on the discharge side of our pump here. With the discharge valve closed, the pump's going to consume the lowest power at all speeds. Those are the numbers that we need to use for the power tuning. Now let's take a look at the associated parameters. So we want to start out by going into main menu parameter group 22, application functions. So I'll enter that group. And then I'm going to move down to 22-2, no flow detection. The first parameter we're going to see here is 2220, low power auto setup. So what the no flow power tuning is going to do is take two speeds in the curve. The auto setup here will automatically take 50% of your motor high speed limit that is set in parameter 413 or 414. In North American defaults, that happens to be 60 hertz. So the low power auto setup will take 50% of 60 hertz or 30 hertz and grab the calculated motor power at that point and then it will ramp up to 85 percent of my maximum speed of 60 hertz or 51 hertz and it will record the motor power at that speed again both these numbers are recorded in a no flow situation so we have the lowest power at all points after the drive has collected that information it will complete the power curve so let's go ahead and enable this parameter It's going to remind me to set my output low and high speed limits. Really the motor high speed limit is the only critical one here. I've done that. It's set to 60 hertz. So I'm going to press OK. It's going to remind me I need to close the outlet valve on the pump. That's been already done so we are pumping uh, against a closed valve here. I'm going to press the hand on key and the tuning is going to start. So first it's ramping up to the higher speed of 51 hertz. We see the drive is ramping right now. We're at our reference, or 51 hertz, and it looks like the 0.37 kilowatts is the power it's going to record at that speed. This display here is my actual motor power. Now it's ramping down to the lower speed of 30 hertz, and it looks like 0.09 kW is the power it's going to grab there. All right, the auto setup has been completed. It's uh, telling us we can open the valve. I'm going to press the OK key, and it's going to save that information. I'm going to go back through a couple more parameters here and explain uh, exactly what happened. So I'm going to move down to the next parameter, low power detection. This is enabled by default after executing the tuning sequence. So that is enabled, and we need to have low power detection on in order for this to work. Low speed detection is not necessary. That's for detecting no flow based on running at minimum speed for a certain amount of time. That's usually applicable in a PID pressure application. The no flow function. So in order to get something to happen here in the event a no flow is detected, we have to select a function here. I'm going to choose trip. And then finally we have the no flow delay defaulted to 10 seconds. This is the, the delay before the no flow will occur. So I have to be at or below the calculated no flow power for 10 seconds before the trip will occur. And we're going to move down and take a look at the no flow power tuning parameters. So first of all, 2230 is simply a readout of the calculated no flow power at any given speed. So if we reach this no flow power our timer should be counting if we're still at or below that power after the timer has expired the drive will respond so that is a readout you cannot change that 
I am going to end up putting this value here up in my keypad display so we can view the actual power and the no flow power when we're testing this out. We have a power correction factor. This is going to let me shift the entire curve up or down in case no flow is not being detected when it should or if it's being t detected prematurely. So I can shift the whole curve and do a little fine tuning if necessary. The low speed hertz, so here's the 30 hertz that the auto tuning used. Again, that is automatic that it's going to use 50 and 85% of your high speed limit. So 30 hertz, it acquired the 0.12 horsepower number, and at 51 hertz, it got 0.5 horsepower. Now, as an alternative to the automatic tuning, you can manually do the no-flow power tuning. So, for instance, if 30 hertz is not a good number for you for your low speed, uh, possibly you don't get any flow or you don't ever run below 35 hertz, then it would make more sense to tune at that speed. So you can do it manually. You simply come in here and you enter your low flow speed and then you put the drive in hand mode and r ramp it up to that speed and you look at your display, find out what the motor power is at that speed and then you enter it in the low speed power. And then you manually ramp it up to your high speed, whatever that might be. It could be 51 hertz, it might be 55 hertz. And at that speed, again, you view in the display what the actual power is, and then you enter it in this number, uh, this parameter 2239. So you can tune manually as an alternative to the auto-tuning. All right, so let's test this out here. I'm going to go to my status screen, and I currently have a... Uh, open the valve here so we have a normal flow situation. So let's start the drive here and take a look at these numbers. Here we see my actual motor power and over here we see the drive's calculated no flow power. So at 55 hertz here and a no, uh, normal flow situation you can see that we're well above the calculated no flow power. So we will not uh, issue any alarms here. I'm going to change the speeds here just take a look at how this follows the curve. So we're still well above it all the way down in the lower speed range it's still working accurately although I do get closer to that number and that makes sense so normal flow conditions everything is right so I'm going to turn this off here and I'm going to make an adjustment to the valve and now I'm going to close the valve uh, the majority of the way just leave it cracked a little bit so we have a very low flow situation not a no flow but a low flow situation All right. I've made that adjustment. Let's go ahead and start the drive again here and take a look at this. Ramping up to 50 hertz. Here we have the actual power and here's the calculated no flow power. Now, I am above the no flow power. Close, but I'm above it. And you might have saw there that I dipped below it momentarily, but that's what uh, the delay is for there. We have to be at or below the calculated no-flow power for the delay before the function will be executed. Change my speed here. And again, we're very close because we have very minimal flow light right now, only a few GPM, but it's working very accurately. All the way down here to 30 hertz. Again, very close, but we do have some flow, so the function is working very nicely right now. And finally, I'm going to stop the drive. I'm going to completely close the discharge valve to create the no-flow situation, and we'll test one last time. All right, the valve has been closed. Start the drive. We'll ramp to 55 hertz. And here you can see now we are at that calculated no flow. So my uh, delay timer is counting right now in a few seconds, and we have our no flow alarm. I can reset that alarm. The drive will attempt to restart, but we will get the same result at any speed because we're going to be at that calculated no flow power. Here we are again. We're at the no-flow power, so my timer is counting right now, and we're going to end up uh, tripping on the no-flow again. So there you have it. Uh, no-flow power tuning can be done automatically or manually. Hope this video was helpful for you, and thanks for watching. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. 
Danfoss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.